Share we are live. Good morning to those people watching on the YouTube channel of the London Borough of Newham website in the video section. Welcome to a meeting of the Licensing Committee and this will be available in the video section after the um, meeting has ended. It's in the uh, recorded section. If you wish to follow the proceedings, you can do so on the Council's website under Minutes and Agendas under the Your Council section of the website. I'm Neil Wilson, I'm Chair of Licensing. I'll be chairing this meeting throughout. I will uh, firstly introduce members of the committee. Uh, the management of the meeting of the business, the chair will agree with members the arrangement for management of the meeting, including the order of business, confirmation of agenda items, including late reports and apologies for absence. Is it your will that the revision uh, that we have not in our original bundle will be the main substantive document to which we refer? Is that okay, colleagues? Thank you. Number two, declarations of interest in accordance with the members and members of the reference to the elected councillors. So with the, in accordance with the members code of conduct, this is time for members to declare any disclosable, dis, any disclosable pecuniary interest or non-pecuniary interest that they may have in any matter being considered at this meeting, having regard to the guidance attached to the, the agenda. The, the guidance is found as agenda item two on pages five and six. Um, any interest members to declare? I think we should do it individually. Councillor Tony Wilson. Councillor Jane Lofthouse. Nothing to declare. Uh, Councillor Pushpa Wakwana. Nothing to declare. Councillor Winston Vaughan. No interest to declare, Chair. And Councillor Patrick Murphy. Interest, Chair. Thank you very much. The confirmation of procedure is outlined on pages seven to 18. Um, is that agreed that we're gonna follow those procedures? Let's do uh, introductions formally, and we will give, I think, our current ward status um, in terms of where we're uh, representing. So I'm Neil Wilson, I'll chair this, and I'll, I'm from Plasto South. Councillor Pat Murphy. Councillor Pat Murphy, Royal Docks. Uh, Councillor Jane Lofthouse. Uh, good morning, Councillor Jane Lofthouse, representing Plasto South. Councillor Winston Vaughan. When Councillor Winston Vaughan representing for Scare South Ward. Uh, Councillor uh, Pushpa Makwana. Councillor Pushpa Makwana representing Little Ward. And Councillor Tony Wilson. Good morning, Councillor Tony Wilson representing Beckton. Thank you very much. Now we are um, in the second half of reviewing our gambling licensing policy. This is a legal requirement placed upon this committee, and we are looking specifically at the feedback from consultation and a continuation of where we were deliberating at the last meeting. Can I ask Sheila Roberts, and can you introduce yourself, Sheila, a title and what we're going to do this morning? Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Sheila Roberts, Assistant Director for Licensing and Regulation. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, Members. Um, the purpose of, the, of this committee is, is a follow-on from of the 12th of April, when the um, draft statement to <coughs> licensing policy for gambling was first discussed. Um, during the hearing, we discussed the consultation that we received from Goss Chalks to represent the Betting and Gaming Council, uh, and we had a discussion about their comments. That the response to Goss Chalks is now attached as Appendix 1, and that is on page 21 of the published report. Um, in that, following that um, consultation, there is a summary there of uh, the response to each and every one. I will do is I will take you through the impact that that has had on the gambling policy following um, the actual bo main body of the report. So attached in appendix two is, is um, the existing <coughs> draft gambling policy, <coughs> excuse me, amendments that were just made before the first hearing. These are the <coughs> this current hearing. Appendix three from page 71 contains the equality impact assessment draft will be further amended at purely when the census data of 2020 at this moment in time that's not been published but once that is published it will be updated again i can talk to you about um any impacts that that, that has had that the review has had which are minimal 12th of April, two questions that the members raised. One was with regard to the proportion of terrestrial gambling premises as opposed to online gambling platforms. 
Um, we, we have looked into the latest um, publication from the Gambling Commission, which was published in May of 2021. Um, and what that states is that online remote gambling now represents 52.3% of the overall market. The total numbers of betting premises have continued to decline. Um, and this is the seventh consecutive annual reporting period within which the number of betting shops have declined. And um, as we discussed last time, we've seen that in Newham from a high of 87. Now we have um, 79 betting premises. The second question related to um, a query about why was race mentioned in the policy in relation to, to gambling? Um, again, from Ga Gamble Aware, which is a gambling support charity, shows that problem gambling is more prevalent in men in younger age groups and those of Asian, Asian British, Black or Black British origin. Hence, operators have to understand the demographics of our borough so that robust risk assessments and controls can be, can be implemented and as we discussed on the 12th of April so that any um, gambling aid support for problem gambling can be targeted towards the right communities and in the right way to reach difficult to reach people. Um, the recommendations are that the licensing committee is um, agrees to the draft as uh, the draft policy sorry as um, today and recommend to council the adoption of the draft gambling policy. The reasons for the recommendation is that this is a legislative requirement. We have to review this policy every three years. Also to, to encourage um, openness and transparency in decision making and to ensure that those affected by the policy have had the opportunity to input into it. So if, if you're you agree, Chair. What I would like to do was refer to <coughs> the tabled policy and talk uh -huh. about the changes. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we just pause? So is everybody clear what the, what we're we're attempting to do at the end of this municipal cycle? We're 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 um, given the powers to recommend to agree a draft policy attached as this is with the revisions. Of, um, Sheila is about to go through, but just before you, we, you know, so we're all clear on what the end point is. We recommend to the council adoption of the draft gaming policy. Now, sadly, that will have to be in the new municipal cycle. And we're looking, I think, of a time scale around June and July. The added complication is that the government itself, in the DCMS, I think is the relevant department, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, they are indicating after several prevarications and the pandemic that this gambling policy uh, has to be in the context of new legislation. Is that correct, um, Sheila? So we're doing this. It's a three year statutory review, but the committee or its successor bodies will have to be doing it again possibly sooner than three years is my sort of inkling but Sheila can you just outline that one yes yeah the, um the gambling yeah when does it have to be agreed by <laughs> this has to be agreed by the July full council it, it does but until it's agreed the existing policy stands right so it's a statutory review but but it, you're not without a policy you, you you just refer to the previous policy it's, it's a bit like licensing there's never a, a sort of like long point it just you know it, the existing policies like when you do licenses on the premises until unless and until they're actually taken away that people are allowed to operate and all the rest of it so there'll be no gap but what i'm saying is because we're caught in a different sort of central government um delay on this it looks as if we'll be coming back anyway but it's it's good to, it is revised quite regularly and it's on those points is that okay procedurally is that okay everybody to continue yeah is that okay winston yeah Sheila, sorry long interruption but i thought it was right to clarify that one that's fine so so with regard to the review the, the gambling commission which which um Councillor Wilson rightly said, comes within the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, have reviewed all license, all gambling licensing regulations um, and codes of practice. There was a consultation in uh, 2019, but because of the pandemic, the publication of that report has been delayed. So that is supposed to be delayed next month in May 2022. That's when we've been promised it will be published. It won't just deal with a review of the Gambling Act. It will also deal with uh, online gambling, uh, advertising associated with uh, gambling as, as well. So 
at the moment, for example, with, with um, advertising, there are restrictions. So nothing on television before the watershed. Uh, you can't put gambling sponsorship on children's uh, football shirts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there the are um, bids to try and extend some of the, the restrictions. Um, I haven't seen the results of the consultation, obviously, because it's not been published. And there is a lot of anxiety about online gambling and controls. You may have seen now if um, betting organisations advertise, they do talk about fair fair and open betting a lot more so about setting limits having your own limit having a timeout limit or a monetary limit those kind of things are being looked at and reviewed as well um, as, as has been mentioned before we deal only with the premises licenses in our borough so the gambling commission deal with the operator license so they would be for terrestrial and online and they also deal with personal licenses so for example in in aspas casino the croupiers need personal licenses mm -hmm. and the people in control of the gambling decisions also need a personal license we don't deal with those we just deal with can I ask one other question? Yeah, fine. I'd, I'd rather we got it all clear because it's quite—it's—it's mm. it's a bit of a minefield. This one <coughs> has perceptions attached, but do it going on. Yeah. Right, like the alcohol licensing, where officers can go and visit premises at any time to see if they're contravening the license. Is there any way that we can do this in terms of gambling? Yes, yeah, we do. We do. We, we, we've just carried out a series of visits to um, assess their risk assessments to make sure that they've got risk assessments in place. Also, to find out who's actually trading, because um, you don't. If you stop trading, you don't have to surrender your license, but it, it's worth something. Um, so we, we've we've just carried out that just to verify that everybody has got a risk assessment. Um, those risk assessments need to be reviewed either generally every 12 months or if anything significant happens so for example if a new a new senior school was built in, in close proximity or there was a new um, uh, support center for people with addictions for, for example they would then need to to review that so we need to publish a local area plan that gives all that information um, to betting uh, betting shop uh, operators so they can review that. But yes, we do. We also carry out um, age restricted tests from time to time um, to see whether or not, you know, pe people who are under 18 are permitted to gamble or be on the premises, in fact. Yeah. Tony? Yeah. <coughs> Judge, is this possible to um, cover adult gaming centres? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Councillor Lofthouse? Um, yes, you, you mentioned the new legislation, <clears throat> mainly we're talking about advertising and online. I, is there anticipation there'll be much change regarding premises, licences, which we're dealing with? I, I, I know you're, you... I mean, I'd, I'd be speculating. It's not just about those, but they are the main concerns. There's also some... Um, the trade would like to see uh, the ability to transfer casino licences. Because at the moment, you can only have the casino in the borough that um, where the, the legislation says it can be. So, for example, Newham, you are aware that Newham, Newham has a, a large casino, um, but there are some casinos who have licences that aren't being used, but there's a desire to transfer them to another borough. So, for example, Westminster, maybe um, they might want to transfer that licence to, to Southwark, for example. That's just an example. Um, so that I know that that's been looked into as well, but I, I don't know the outcome of it. So if I may, would, would that affect our, um, our management, our control of, the, of such premises? I mean, would, would control of the actual... Well, the control of... No, the control of the... It, it would actually physically move. So I do, in my personal opinion is that ASP is not... Is not going anywhere um but though it's it's more the dormant licenses so the, the, i think i believe that there's one in leeds and i'm pretty sure there's one in westminster so if i don't know huddersfield for example somebody an operator in huddersfield thought there was a need for a casino then they could transfer that license because there's a finite number of casino licenses 
facility. Which is set by a central government. Yeah. But now I think that's been helpful. I, you know, just to, I'm sorry, we're, we're on a we're, we're in a sort of a realm of speculation. But I think it's always useful to look at what they now call the direction of travel, the likely. Like, I mean, I think just to to um, labour the point, because not all of us were present at the last one for various reasons. Page twenty, I think, is very in the main bundle. Page 20, why is race mentioned in the policy? We did raise this at the last meeting. We are the youngest population in its age structure as a whole of the UK. We have a prevalence uh, in men, a propensity in terms of particularly um, betting shops, but also slot machines, they call now officially. Um, fixed odd betting terminals. Fixed odd betting terminals. I know the state's been, uh, you know, um, reduced by us in the lead on that one with other councils and the local government association. But in those in Asian, Asian British, Black, Black British, and I'd include in that Black African as well as Black Caribbean origin, it is not about profiling, it's about where we're at with the demography of our borough. It's not about a sort of like stop and search sort of like approach that we're, we're just blanketing everybody in those categories. But it, operators have to understand the demographics. And I think if people are commercial operators, it's the same this committee when it's in its guise of licensing 2003 out. We, we, we raise questions about locations of schools or young people. And what I welcome is, I think we said this last time, uh, Tony and Winston, we were stressing the vulnerability stuff that we, you know, we need to push a bit more. From a licensing committee point of view, we we want more, you know, in terms of the Licensing Act 2003 reviewed in terms of people with addiction problems, as well as gambling aware of said, gamble aware, and they've got a sort of health warning on the TV adverts, you know, take a break, you know, don't overspend, all the rest of it. Gambling aware show that there is a problem. There is problem gambling, and it's we just have to acknowledge that. I think. Yeah. Anyway, back to the additions, uh, Sheila. Is that all right? Yeah, can I just just make one other point, please? Yeah. On, that, on on the, the the question around race, um, these are this is a national picture. I'm going to say these are national statistics. National picture, and it's based on people who seek assistance either from directly or, or through uh, referred from other people um but the, there is a policy within most gambling um in most of the gambling industry which is called know your customer and that's important to know to know their customer so whether that's in newham or westminster or Leeds or whatever they know their customer their catchment and therefore their vulnerabilities and how they need to target help that's uh, tell me just back on that question we have such trends in um um, community here. How do you get to know your customer when they are just here, there, and everywhere? You, you can only know from what information is available. So that's why, I mean, we know the census only happens every 10 years, but, you know, it is, it is important. And the information that we can gather generally from EQI is Newham's information as well. So there's a central repository, as I'm sure you know, in, in, in Newham for equalities, diversity, information. But it's what you do with the information that matters, doesn't it? Because although there may be a prevalence in... in Gambling harm can be can be caused at, 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 to a wide breadth of people. It doesn't mean that everybody who gambles will be subject to gambling harm, but obviously that's what people are interested. That there was a study um, some years ago now, uh, maybe ten years ago, that said six percent of the people who do gamble may have gambling harm. Gambling harm. Sorry, could you just project that a bit more? So, um, th there was a, a gambling prevalence survey, I think it was about 10 years ago, it might be longer, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember, and it said that about 6% of the population may be subject to gambling harm. Mm. Yeah, that seems to be a, a figure that might have come across. <laughs> mm. Anyway, shall we, so if I, all right, colleagues, if we move to the specific amendments this was we spent a long time i think three years ago some of us going through this and we, you know we we're we're not doing catch up i would argue that we're at the forefront of trying to actually push for more on vulnerability and in the introduction we're saying a uh, better understanding of vulnerability within the borough liaison with other council departments including public health 
I mean, like we argue in the re reform that we think is long overdue for 2003 Act licensing, it is about the vulnerability and the engagement more of health partners. But Sheila, can you do specific page references on oh, where we've made these, well, where you and officers have worked in the last uh, brief meeting on the 12th? Yeah. On the brief meeting, in the previous <laughs> the 12th. So obviously the, the introduction is, is new because it, it was a different chair last time so um, that's not a change since the last committee the first change is on page 15 of the tabled paper page 5 uh, one five. Oh, one five. Sorry, one five. One five. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I've got I think it's this there's oh, a it's me. coming somewhere I don't know where from but late night last night at full do apologize and we said uh, there was a certain football match in the stadium I saw here yes. was yes indeed yes and, uh, now on page 15 at the bottom, there's a, a little star there. And I'm sorry, that's that's me. That's my star. That's my only star on it. Um, so, paragraph A, 10.3. So, the changes um, that are highlighted, but not very well, are in response to the consultation comments from God. Um, what their, their issue was that there was a presumption that um, antisocial behaviour and drug taking industry was associated with the gambling premises. That is not what we are saying. What we are saying is that where there are known concerns, and, and which is why it's changed there to known concerns and criminal behaviour, um, is that the premises should be aware of that. So for example, if there are people um, street drinking outside, there is a prohibition on taking alcohol into the premises not allowed to have alcohol in betting premises not casinos in betting premises so that's something that, that they should be aware of so these are where there are known concerns and they should take that into account it's not presumption the next change is on page 21 so, so what are we saying about that we're leaving that in the proximity of we are saying that where there are known concerns um <laughs> For example, criminal behaviour arising from street drinkers, youth participating in antisocial behaviour, um, and which are close to, uh, and, and the betting shop is close to places of religious worship, that should be taken into account. So we're leaving that in because we, we're, we're, a, we're minded because of the um, issues that we, this, we, we note that Gosh Chalks is, is uh, acting on behalf of the gaming industry. The, game, the gaming industry, I think we call it generically, don't we? Sorry, I've got it on my nerve. But Gosh Talks is, it has a, a certain vested interest with its submissions to any gambling policy. So are we, can we do it line by line, Sheila, and agree with them? We're, we're agreeing with this. It's consistent with what we said. <coughs> Yvonne? Can I, can I probably discuss the second paragraph, 10.3? And we talk about churches, mosques, temples, and stop there, and then talk about any other place of worship. Mm. Kind of restrict um, in this document the places of worship. No, there are all other places of worship, whether it's a Pentecostal gospel hall, or whether it's uh, we know it, sadly we don't have any synagogues left in Newham. We certainly have gurdwaras. We have, you know, we are we're, we're religiously very diverse. So. I mean, I think it's just, would you rather we didn't mention church, mosques and temples? They're just the three main groups. We're 58% Christian, so, you know, I don't, I don't know quite what point you're making, Winston. It's, it includes everything. That's a place of worship. Yeah, but there's a number of prominent places of worship. But someone reading this who doesn't fall in this category mm. might be upset that they're not mentioned. Yes. <laughs> Synagogues, for instance. There's none. There's none. We sadly, that's what I said. We sadly have no, no, none left. We used to have three or four. And then they have the Pente I guess you call it Pentecostal or church. Yeah, but that would come under churches. They would call themselves churches. Seventh day Adventists in our ward, where Jane and I are, it's a Ghanaian Seventh day Adventist. It, that would be classed as a church. I just, I just feel that if we put too long a list in, it's going to complicate it. If, if you, if you turn over the page, though, that there are other types of premises that are mentioned. The reason, the reason that that the the, the, the at 
point about churches, mosques, etc., has been highlighted is because Gostrup specifically said on page 22 of the main report um, that the, in, in their view, um, the, the wording proximity of churches, mosques, temples, and other places of worship should be deleted. Yeah, yeah. So we're saying we should keep it in. Yeah, yeah. Is that all right? I mean, it is, it, it's always difficult because you, it's like equality's policy when, you know, some of us were the etc. for years. Now, you know, if you're not careful, you have a whole list. Uh, the, now the council just has the equality line from Stonewall and others, equality for all. But, you know, do you remember we had trade union membership, marital status, family background, you know, how far a list can you go? We have the most, even within the mosque, um, the mosque, there's 20 different um, types of mosque, so it could be an exhaustive list. I don't think it's ruling out religion. Any other place of worship is in there for a reason. And those who would argue otherwise, well, you know, I don't, I don't think that, it wouldn't stand or fall on this. We are defending it that if they're adversely affected by the gambling premises, you know, that's quite right that it should be in there. Um, Councillor McWana, on this yeah, point. I just want to raise one this generic question. I understand <coughs> we are talking about faith here. I'm just concerned that we've got loads of private tuitions opened up in the borough as well. Private tuitions centres. Tuition centres. Yeah. I mean, but they, yeah, they may be, I think. Councillor Loftus and other guys as the deputy cabinet member, the legislation pertaining to those and its registration would be covered by Ofsted. So what is the, po the point that you're rightly making, I think, is that we don't know where these are sometimes. Um, I mean, and that's, and we're, we're hard pressed in both children's services and in enforcement, as you know, to actually know there's some places that sort of come and go sometimes along East Ham High Street, for instance, East Ham North. There was one that's now changed its use about four times, but that, that's not unique to this borough. The same is true in Hackney, Islington, and other places where I've worked. They're unregulated sometimes, and often don't know where they are, and neither does the council. But we can't legislate for everything, I don't think. No, no, no. But, but with regard to, to uh, the members' query, paragraph A10.5 deals with um, the risk assessment should show how children are to be protected. So that talks about the proximity of institutions <laughs> or areas where children and young people frequent. So that would be covered by that. What, what we are dealing with now are the changes. It, it's not the whole policy. And if you, if you would like me to go through the whole policy at a different time, that's, that's absolutely fine. Mm. These are things that need to be taken into account. Yeah. So what we're dealing with now are, are the changes rather than the whole policy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a living document. I, I did do the preface by saying that whoever is to be elected um, in a, a process, because this is the last committee of the whole council, so I'm hoping, and we are in a pre-election period, whoever were to be re-elected needs to take the baton up to get this one through, but it's going under revision anyway, so, you know, it's revision by central government, and I think it gives us a, a breathing space to actually have a new discussion. This... Um, Winston, do you want to come back on places of worship? Because I really don't, I really want to move on. I, I want to state the reasons why um, I raised it, because this is a document of the review. Uh -huh. Anything we think that should be in it and is not in it, yeah. we debate it. Yeah. Okay, and we accept the outcomes of that. So we've done that, because this is something which I pointed out, and we have discussed it, yeah. which is excellent. So I think that's the right way to do it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I we should never rubber stamp any document, and especially something as contentious, high profile, with a lot of perceptions around it in regard to the gambling industry. But I mean, the, the starting point uh, in a lot of this discussion is so much of it is now going off premises and online, and there's an even bigger problem. It's a bit like if I take the analogy with television, you know, it's a, it keeps changing all platforms, you know, the social media thing. We can't control everything, but the powers that we do have, we should rightly do in terms of our demographic, religious, young population, yeah? yeah. Which, I mean, observance by, by faith is pretty high in this borough, actually, compared with a lot of the neighbouring boroughs, you know, they're, they're a lot of religious observance. Jane, is it on that specific? It's very pedantic, actually. No, that's fine. But just, just to ask how A10.3 is actually going to read, ultimately. Yeah. I mean, we've got two 
A10.3. Yeah. I know it's just one of No, that's right. Out. Yeah. A10.3. It, it is, we've got two on 15, Sheila, at the bottom, then it's repeated. Is it the same A10.3 just continued? It may be a pagination. It's a continuation of A. <laughs> it's just going to be a continuation. Yes. Is that okay? Thanks very much. And let, you know, the proximity to schools we talked about last time, we are talking about, and uh, it does repeat itself in, uh, to answer your point, Councillor Vaughan, the, the last bullet point of 10.3 says the proximity of churches, mosques, temples, or any other place of worship as a list, which is what, you know, 15 points or something. Yeah? It's something in that risk assessment, which we welcomed last time, three years ago, because the onus is on each physical, I, I keep stressing it's a physical location has to have a risk assessment. It's not the online stuff that isn't growing. Yeah. Back to and that sheet. The risk assessment requirement was new in the last yeah. the last review. That yeah, we took longer on it. Do you remember doing the risk assessment mm -hmm. thing and we had uh, the independent mapping and from a university and all sorts of things. Okay, okay which is the next one? Okay, so the, the next change is on page 21. Um, it's highlighted B3.1. Um, the one that's in highlight already, yes. Yeah. It's in highlight already, yes. <laughs> um, the, this, again, is as, a, as, is as a result of a comment by Gosstraws. The Gambling Act is not the same as the Licensing Act. In the Licensing Act, where a premises lies within a cumulative impact zone, as you know, the onus is on the applicant to show how it will not mm -hmm. contribute to crime and disorder. When it's not in um, a cumulative impact zone, the onus is there to show how, how the, the premises will comply with the licensing objectives. But the Gambling Act is not written in that way. There is no requirement to show, to demonstrate compliance, because there are, there are lots of codes of practice. It's, it's a requirement that the operator license point that um, conditions are, are complied with. There are more mandatory conditions. However, um, we, we, we accept that it's not mandatory, um, but what, what we do think is that um, we welcome, we, we would welcome additional conditions or we would welcome voluntary conditions where there are known antisocial behaviour problems or there are known levels of crime or vulnerability that will impact on that, on the premises. And an example that, that I know that members are concerned about is staffing. Um, so it's always staffing whether, um, and I, I gave this example last time, if sixth form colleges uh, finish, finish the education at a certain time, then maybe there should be consideration to having more people there to, to, to make sure that young people do not access the premises. Um, so although we accepted the fact that it's not a mandatory, we are still saying that we recommend that you do take uh, into account the uh, control measures that your risk assessment would come up with as a licensed condition, it's not mandatory. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got that um, phrase. I mean, uh, we, we're presumably it's consistent with our legal framework. It's gone through. You know, we, 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 we can put this in because it's it does say very clearly. Um, you know reasonably consistent that's a, a sort of sufficient legal sort of phrase and however due to challenges posed by deprivation vulnerability levels of crime antisocial behavior we welcome additional conditions where deemed necessary and will only be imposed where there is a clear risk to the licensing objectives that's not adequately addressed by mitigation so it's a sort of it's a it's it's dealing with where we were going last time i think any further points on that one Councillor Murphy, you content? Yes. Yes, sorry. Because yeah, you weren't here, I'm just trying to, you know, we're just trying to. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. And, That's good. Yeah. And the next change is on page 22. Uh huh. Three, eight. It's really the same, the same point. Um, so where there is a local risk, uh, it may be necessary and proportionate to offer additional conditions there is a risk to the licensing objective. Again, largely here we're talking about vulnerability. So that was really a rewording 
uh, that said it may sometimes be necessary and proportionate to offer additional conditions. And the exemplars given as one, two, three at sequendum, they are what was in the original before, wasn't it? Because yes. we were very concerned about loan working, <coughs> you know, staff very often. We're in a post pandemic situation, people on London minimum wage or something working on their own, people coming in who are slightly. Um, um, might be um, worse for other substances like alcohol and a verification and it's 21 it's a challenge 21 that is applied isn't it, it, uh, yeah, it it's not a challenge 25 no it's a national standard i'm afraid it, it is challenge 2021 20, but obviously if people are 18 then they they can gamble the same as with the licensing act it, it, the challenge is on the appearance of mm -hmm. under 21 but we did say that we've got a very large um, sixth form college. We have, you know, about three post-16 institutions. We have large sixth form students coming in from other boroughs. And I have taught people in year nine who are both taller than me and could possibly go for 18. So it is, it is a quite a worrying thing because it may be bravado. It may be a group thing. I don't. Li I don't like to associate because I have been in youth policy for years. I don't want to label young people, but sometimes it's a sort of you know, a confidence thing and all the rest of it to challenge each, to challenge each other as well. So we've got loan working covered there, Sheila, haven't we? And about um, fitted out, ready for operation. Inspection is there. Councillor Vaughan, I think your point under two, the licensing authorities can inspect the premises. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we can expect, we can inspect at any time with with a reasonable notice or do, are we allowed to do on, you know, um, just out of interest? Well, it's intelligence led, then, then we, we can. And obviously, as, as you rightly said, in Newham, Newham's got a very young population. So this kind of generic intelligence that we know, therefore, that is a risk in, in, in Newham because we have got a very young population. So that's the kind of intelligence. Um, some betting chains have what's called a primary authority. Uh, where they have a primary authority, they may agree certain standards as, on a national basis, uh, in which case we refer to those national uh, standards. For example, it could be that all the machines are in sight, are in a clear line of sight, so that whoever is working on the till uh, can, can see. And, and so the layout of the premises has been agreed on a national, it's a standard layout, for example. Um, but if there's any deviation locally, if, um, I don't know, there's a partition wall or something that, that's there and, and that line of sight is not there, then you know we may uh, recommend that that's dealt with. Okay. Thanks very much. It's um, been very helpful. I mean, I mean, the revisions highlight how you know we 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 try to sort of deal with our population, but also deal with the issues that you know sometimes we don't think about. Um, next one, Shana. I think it was three or four, wasn't it? Yeah, the, fi the final change following the consultation is on uh, page twenty-eight of of the tabled um, and and really that. Goss Chalks asked for clarification on um, gaming machines and betting machines. So we've added the line at the bottom that says there is no ability to restrict the number of gaming machines just, just by means of explanation. We talked about fixed odd betting terminals before, FOBTs. Um, there is a restriction that betting shops are, that, that there's a restricted number, they're allowed four. But with gaming machines, gaming machines are a game are, are supposed to be a game of skill rather than chance. Fixed or better machines are pure chance. Um, whereas the games of skill might be a quiz machine. You know, sometimes they have. Uh, I think it's who, maybe showing my age. Who wants to be a millionaire <laughs> type thing? Um, you know, and then if you some get, reference to something, <laughs> <I believe. laughs> I think it came back, didn't it? I think. Yeah. <laughs> but the last time I saw one, that's that's what I saw. So it, it could be a game of, of, of skill, uh, and there is no limit on how many of those machines can be uh, uh, can be in any um, premises. So that they are the, the final changes. Um, and just just um, and I think it's important for those watching this uh, meeting is that Newham were in the forefront of um, a attempting to not just reduce the number of fixed 
or fixed term, what, a fixed odds, odds betting terminals. I always get this muddled, but we are, the state went down from 100, we said this last time, 100 to then 25, now it's two pounds or something. Yeah, the, the, the maximum stake used to be 100 pounds mm. per spin of the wheel, so to speak, and that's gone down to two pounds. The maximum prize was 500, and that's gone down to 100. No, but this is as, uh, as Sheila points out. We've got so many different categories. The holder of a betting premises license made by virtue of Section One Hundred and Seventy-Two, Section Eight of the Gambling Act, Two Thousand and Five, make available to use up to four gaming machines of the categories B, C, or D, and the gaming machines are Category A. I'm assuming, Sheila, is that? I don't know. I've got the list. Not they're not a category because that the, there's no there's no, no it's, chance. It's it, supposed it, to be skill. It's supposed to be skill, so they would be under the, they would be caught by that section. Mm. Sorry, who was next? I saw some questions. No, no, is everybody? Yeah, we okay. Tony, I thought I saw indications. Um, it's going back to the challenge twenty one. So if you want to finish your junior. No, I yeah, I think that is that all clear on that one because it is a bit of a confusing landscape. Because, you know, I, I personally don't know. How would you, how would you, I mean, I'm not asking you, Sheila, necessarily, but how would any of us, you know, know the difference, really, at one level between these games of skill and it's still losing money on it? Isn't it? If it's a game of chance, it, it has to have a label to say what category it is. Who well, doesn't? I, admittedly, you might not know what that means, but you, well, most people can Google things. Um, and it's all to do with, with, how much you can bet and how much you you may win. Yeah. Yeah. Is everybody? All, we, we may not be happy with the situation, but are we content with that being left there as it is? Yeah. Councillor Tony Wilson. So, going back to page twenty-two, um, um, and or, or more three point twenty-one, uh, chapter twenty-one. Um, if you go on to page twenty-three. Alternatively, candidates may wish to consider and have a Challenge 25 policy in the yeah. yep. So, on that premise, and um, with the works that we've been doing with the licenses, that not work better in our favour? It would, it would, but um, it's not something that we can require unless there's evidence. So, if there's any particular application or a review of, of a betting premises um, that age restricted uh, controls are not appropriate at that time it would be but but at the moment it is a national agreed standard i'm afraid okay it would have to be relevant too so there, there's, there's no reason why if if a new application came that members could not say this is yeah. wherever it is <coughs> we're going to impose challenge 25 you could do that oh, they, so, they yeah. could. that's that's good i think that we need to reiterate that one despite it being separate legislation from that which we often deal with in terms of the 2003 act if it were to be a new premises license under the gaming act Imposition, sorry, imposition of, of conditions is allowable by elected members at that. Obviously, as with any other license condition, you would have to have evidence. You would yes, it would have to be evidence based. It wouldn't be a maverick decision. Oh, we, you, know, could, you couldn't have a blanket. Um, no blanket. And, and then obviously it would be subject to appeal. Yeah, subject to appeal rights. Jane, did you indicate? No, no. Oh, sorry. No, that's interesting. So are we. We're not necessarily content in the sense that we're agreeing the, the whole legislative framework, but bearing in mind we've got a gambling licensing policy, we wish to have <coughs> mop it up, as it were, ready, anticipating yet more legislation, legislative changes. Can we go to the recommendations then? Sheila, do you have any further remarks? Sorry, before I do. I, I, I do not, unless there are other questions. Any? Gambling is not, we, we don't deal with it as often as we do with, with the uh, licensing at 2003 um, and the the licensing objectives are a little bit more limited yeah yeah so we've got even more sort of restrictions. We, we 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 complain at you know um cross-party level in the local government association about how the legislation for that needs to be reviewed i think this has certainly got to be catching up when was the gambling act like that what we that was 2005 so that's 
it's, you know, the world has changed quite considerably since. So the recommendations are on page 20, colleagues. For the reasons set out in the report and its appendices, this licensing committee is recommended to agree to approve the draft policy as tabled with its amended amendments today and recommend to the full council adoption of the draft gambling policy. The reasons for that is to comply with legislative requirements. It's a three year cycle. Mm -hmm. Ensure open and transparency in our decision making. That's why this meeting is open and on, on the YouTube platform, all meetings of council are open to the public and to ensure that those persons affected by the policy have had the opportunity to have an input into it. And that consultation went live and was on our website and all the rest of it. Yes, yes. It, 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 it. Yeah, for a period of how long did we put that? Four weeks. Four weeks. Uh, because so. this, the, these are minor changes. There were no substantial changes. Had there have been substantial changes, then we would have gone through a 12 week consultation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you're aware, we received one consultation comment. Now, I'm sorry, I've read out those recommendations. I did have something on the EQIA. So <laughs> that's the Equality Impact Assessment, which is outlined on page 71 of the main bundle. It wasn't a question, it was to say basically that in terms, and I think it ties up with Councillor Vaughan's point about uh, religious background and things. On the protected characteristic, class or socioeconomic um, disadvantage, as rightly talking about the deprivation, but also the, the University of Bristol study, which has shown that we've got one betting shop per 5,196 persons. That's like, <coughs> half the relevant ratio of councillors to the population, actually, um, or about the same. It compares with just 2% in the least deprived. So latest figures in February, um, we've said already about the Gambling Aware Survey and the high time gamblers, etc. Age, disability there, pregnancy, maternity, race um, and religion belief. Um, and it is, I just wanted to highlight, because I think it's relevant, Councillor 74, under the equalities legislation, there is a right of any person to make an application, make representations about an application or a trip prior to a review. That can be either as an individual or a corporate entity, and each will be considered on its own merits. Yeah? Moral objections, and I think we said this last time, are not a valid reason to reject applications for a premise. <laughs> It is possible for local religious groups to be affected by gambling premises operations in terms of adverse impact or their group members in the borough if required to take into account the proximity, for example, of faith schools, and I think that's where Councillor McWarner's point, places of worship and places of gathering within their local risk assessment. I think that phrase, places of gathering, because some people don't necessarily want the word church or place of worship, Does that? I think that's a better phrase on that. Point, Councillor Vaughan. Do you see where I'm looking under religion and belief? Sorry, I meant to highlight that one. Councillor Vaughan? Yeah. See what I mean? It's a more it's a more inclusive phraseology, I think. It's 74, is it? Yeah, yeah. But this this is like any good equality impact assessment, it's not a one-off. You do it all and all the time. So it has to be there in law, but it also is, you know, updated once we've put it into place. Is that correct, Shana? That's correct. Um, um, legal have, have reviewed this as well. Um, and it, it, it's really, if there are any substantial changes as a result of the census, uh, whenever the census is going to be published, and I think that's imminent. Yeah, the census was 2011. Um, ONS normally take till about October or something, I think. I'm just guessing on past record, but they may be doing it a bit quicker. But you know, but we had the census forms last year, didn't we? So we're it's normally about eighteen months. It was supposedly within the year, but hey, yeah. is that all right, our colleagues? Yeah. So can we agree the recommendations? Can you show physically as we are present by the show of hands? I think that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for the hard work of office. Yeah, no, I'm, you should, uh, and Ed King, who sends apologies. Now, before we close the meeting, I have a very important announcement. I wish to put on record that for the last 16 years, Councillor Pat Murphy, who is leaving this council at the end of the, this current term, 
um, has served faithfully on the licensing committee and most importantly on the licensing 2003 committee. So I want to put on public record, and I think it's been minuted because we don't often thank people enough in local government, officers or members. So thank you very much, Councillor Murphy, thank you. for supporting me in the chair when I've been difficult. And more importantly, having an in independent mind, which is very crucial to licensing decisions, and to, um, I think, persuade others in deliberation in your inimitable style. So thank you for your contribution. <laughs> yeah. You have a right to reply. But you <laughs> Enough said, Chair. No, thank, thanks very much. Anyway, sorry, was there any other business? Was anybody indicating? Sorry. So uh, I declare the meeting closed. I think we're at, yes, we're at 10.55. So I estimated an hour, but thank